Hi YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In today's tutorial, the first part I am going to talk about something that might be quite controversial among chalk paint companies, but I'm finally going to address it because you know what? First of all, I don't care. I, if you watch me here on YouTube, you know I kind of beat to my own drum. I'm not like other I guess people who paint furniture who are on YouTube, I, I kind of just do my own thing. I am not sponsored by any paint company. I, frankly, I don't want to be because I want to speak freely about whatever I want to speak and I want to create whatever I want to create. And I want to share with you the truth, the truth when it comes to working with chalk paint. And I believe a lot of chalk paint companies are I have to be delicate the way I say this, are misleading people, especially people who just want to do this for fun, who just want to paint one piece of furniture, um, maybe doing it maybe as a little bit of a hobby, um, and they're being misled about what they need to do to a piece of furniture before they start painting. In fact, they're being told they don't have to do anything before they start painting. So I want to get into that, and honestly, um, I'm sure I might get some backlash from this video and I hope though I get a lot of people that kind of cheer me on with kind of being like, yes, something needs to be said. So before I get into that, um, if you've been following me here for a while, thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Bethany. My company is called Madeline Jean Antiques and Restor Restoration. I named it after my 10 year old daughter. And what I do here is I teach you how to refinish furniture. And I go from every topic from sanding, to prepping, to distressing, to waxing, to staining, to polying. I try to cover it all under that big umbrella of do-it-yourself, upcycling, restoring, refinishing furniture. So that's like my main gig on this channel, but I also have been branching out and I do like, you know, fun little crafts and home, do-it-yourself projects, things like that. But in a nutshell, I basically teach people um, what I've learned because I'm completely self-taught. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes um, in the many years that I've been doing this and I've seen a lot as well. So let's get into the topic of what chalk paint companies aren't telling you. Come here, it's a good one. Okay, before I go into that, if you aren't following me yet, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. You have to hit the um, subscribe button here, but you also have to hit that little bell, okay? So that will notify you of every time I upload a new video. And I'm trying my best to stay on a schedule and upload at least one new tutorial every single week, and I'm usually aiming for on the weekends. So it's Sunday night here, and hopefully I'm gonna have this video up tonight. So please subscribe and ding that bell. Thanks. Okay, my biggest pet peeve with chalk paint companies that I see out there. I don't have a problem with their products. I don't have a problem with their paints. I have a huge problem with how they market to people, especially people who are just wanting to paint a piece of furniture that they have in their attic or their basement that's been sitting around, or it's a special piece of furniture that belonged to great Aunt Betty and she's passed on and now they want to pass on the hope chest to like a newborn, you know, um, and have it, you know, belong in the family. And a lot of people end up being so frustrated because they weren't told how to pop properly prep the piece of furniture before they started painting. So what ends up happening, people have adhesion issues. Either the paint's not sticking, the paint um, starts to chip, uh, the paint is easily scratched off, the paint starts peeling, or people have problems with stains coming through the surface after they have painted the piece of furniture it looks fine but as soon as they put a water-based top coat over it it starts to yellow immediately or it turns pink and red because wood tannins are being brought to the surface all because they were told it's a no prep chalk paint and I have examples upon examples. We're gonna quickly go through them. The first here, you're gonna, I'm gonna put them up right here. Um, and I have a phone here. This is my daughter's phone. And I made sure that I'm gonna read off to you 
the first paint company here that you're going to see me pull up. I have blacked out the paint company names, but I highlighted for you how they market their paint. So paint company number one says, with no need for sanding or priming, you can simply pop open the tin, roll up your sleeves, dip in your brush, and apply paint to furniture. This is hogwash. This is just blatant. I have to be careful what I say here. I just think it's a total misrepresentation of their product. And anybody out there who's a seasoned painter, whether you paint walls or you do anything with painting, no, you have to prep. You have to at least clean the piece of furniture. And we're gonna go into this. I'm gonna show you how to correctly prep. I'm gonna give you guys examples. So stay with me with this. I'm gonna try and go quickly as I can. I'm gonna show you how to prep a piece that you're painting white, and I'm gonna show you how to prep a piece that you're painting black, okay? So there's paint company number one. You guys, there's so many examples out there, okay? That's number one. Paint company number two, I highlighted here. Ideal for hard wearing surfaces like cabinets, tabletops. Below, no sanding, no stripping, no sealing, no priming. Holy crap. I mean, this is like magic in a tin, right? <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Nope. Nothing with kitchen cabinets. So you mean to tell me all the grease and grime that's been on there? I, I don't have to sand it. I don't have to clean it. I don't have to pry it. Ooh, click order, order. So what happens is people get sucked in with how easy it appears to use this magical paint, whatever they're selling, and people order it and they paint their kitchen cabinets because they see right here, paint company number two says no sanding, no stripping, no sealing, and I get messages. Oh my gosh, you guys, all my messages that I receive through um, my Facebook business page, my Instagram, my DMs, it's all about, can you please help me? Can you please help me? I screwed up. Um, this isn't working. And it's all because I'm telling you the root cause is these paint companies are telling people you don't have to do jack before you start dipping your brush. Just slap it on. And it's so wrong. And it's really bugging me. And I'm calling people out. I'm tired of it because um, it's not right. And it's not the way to sell a product. Again, there's probably nothing wrong with their product. I have a problem with how they're marketing it. Uh, paint company number three up here, you can see highlighted, um, no sanding or priming, hooey, hogwash. Uh, paint company number four up here, I blocked their name out, no stripping, sanding or priming. No, that's not true. And they said cabinet paint. Again, it's not true. And here's paint company number five right here. Paint company number five says, no priming or sanded needed in most cases. Mm. So paint company number five here kind of touches on it and says, in most cases. So I'm gonna give them a little slack. They're kind of telling you, yeah, you might have to do a little prepping, but in most cases you don't have to, which again. Um, here you go, paint company number six right here. Paint company number six says, no stripping, sanding, or waxing required. Again, you guys, it's just magic in a tin. <laughs> it's not true, it's not true, it's not true. And here is why, I'm gonna tell you guys, okay? Come with me. Okay, you guys, this is why you need to prep, okay? I made up the acronym that prep stands for prepare, write, or expect problems. And if you didn't have to prep, I wouldn't be doing it. Why would I do extra work, extra steps if it wasn't needed? I have been painting for almost 10 years furniture and I have learned a lot with being self-taught. I've learned where I can like, I'm going to say like kind of like cheat a little bit and not have to do so much work and areas where you can absolutely not skip. And I got to tell you, prepping you can't skip it i've done it even recently where i just go yeah i don't really need to do it on this piece you know and it bites me in the butt every single time so with prepping you have to do it 
with every single piece of furniture. Now, I know I'm gonna have people in the comment section that are like, well, I painted a piece of furniture and I didn't do anything. I brought it home from the thrift store and I started painting and it still looks gorgeous in my living room, okay? All right, so you have like a unicorn piece of furniture and I truly don't believe you're being totally honest when you say that and you probably sell paint or get a cut from paint that you sell. You guys have to understand a lot of the people that you see online painting with these products, they're pushing to sell them. So of course they're gonna tell you, this is so easy. You'll have this done in no time, no top coat. You don't need to put a primer. You don't need to do any of this stuff. They're saying that because they wanna get you hooked in. They wanna sell you that $45 quart of expensive paint. $45, okay? And they're hoping you're just gonna take their word for it and you're gonna order it, because why? They get a cut. They get a cut out of every piece of, can, you know, every can of paint that they sell on, beha on behalf of that company. Again, I have no problem with the paint product. I have a problem with the way they sell it and they market, market it to people, okay? This paint is expensive. And what happens is people spend their hard money on this paint and it ends up not turning out and being this easy project. And I get contacted with so many messages of like, what do I do now? And I feel horrible for these people because sometimes I have to tell them, you got to start over. Like, oh, you have bleed through? Yeah, you need to apply two coats of shellac and then you're gonna have to paint again. And everybody's, they're like, I have to order the paint again. And I'm like, yeah. And so these paint companies, some of them, they don't care. People are buying more paint because they screwed up because they didn't prep right. So you guys have to think of it this way. It's just a money machine and it's business. And people sometimes when they're running businesses, they don't have your best interest at heart. They just have the bottom line and that's to sell as much paint as possible, okay? So I'm here to help, truly, truly, this video. I, I wanna help people um, have success with their projects and not be so frustrated. I wanna pull up a recent photo of a furniture group that I belong to on Facebook right here. This woman was complaining that she applied three coats of this fancy paint and it wasn't adhering to the piece of furniture. And you can see there on the corner, the paint looks green. I hope that's what it comes across here. You can just see it's just chipping away um, and she's having an adhesion issue. So everybody was, you know, giving their advice and one lady, I loved her comment. I was like, oh, I got to screenshot this. Um, she says, I'm going to put the comment up here. I don't understand why all these paints always say no prep necessary. Then at the same time, they sell all these prep products. Hmm. I wonder why. Cha-ching. Um, I'm confused. Any help would be welcome. Um, and another woman said, same, I'm a former merchant and always advise customers to sand everything well. In my experience, there are very few pieces that don't need a good all over sanding. Better to do too much than too little and end up with adhesion issues. So I see this so much. It's just a constant problem and this is why I'm doing this video and this is why I'm calling it out and I'm tired of people marketing things just to make a quick buck. So when you think about it, if I can give an example of why prepping is so vital when revitalizing furniture, think about it. If you've gone to a nail salon and you go in there to have a manicure or have freshly painted nails again, they always take off your old nail polish, right? They don't just start painting over your old nail polish that is chipped, no they take it off. Then what do they do? They, they usually buff your nail, right? They prepare the surface. They prepare your nail for the new polish to be put on so it looks clean, so it lays flat, so it looks smooth. And then what do they do? They apply a top coat. Why? For durability. So if you kind of think it in those terms, when you go to a nail salon, you just don't go in and they just start putting on a new coat of nail polish, no. They have to remove the old paint and prep it so you'll have it stick, so you won't have adhesion issues. That's exactly what you need to do when you are refinishing an old piece of furniture, 
Okay, so now that I've gotten kind of that out of my system, I, you guys, I could rant all day long, but I'm trying to keep this video short, okay? So please, 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 please prep your pieces. And so what do I mean by prep your pieces? I'm gonna show you two pieces that I've recently done. One is black, darker behind me, what I did. And another one is white over here. We're gonna talk about what I did, the steps and the products that I used. So let's go do that. Okay, do you guys see both these light colored pieces behind me? I'm gonna go through what I did with each one of these, what I did to prep them. So this coffee table behind me was a dark cherry mahogany table. I'll put it up here what the before was. And I knew I had to use shellac. Shellac is going to be your saving grace, your holy grail of products that you need to have in your arsenal ready to prep a piece of furniture, okay? Shellac looks like this. It comes in a can. It comes in a spray like this. This is the spray. This is the can. I find mine at Lowe's. It runs about, I don't know, 15, 16 bucks. Um, the cans, I don't know, around 10 maybe. Um, and I go through this stuff a lot because I use it almost on every piece of furniture. So when I apply shellac, I use a two inch brush and it's a chip brush, a cheap chip brush. And I apply two coats. The reason being, I have found in the past that you're going to miss little spots. And even if you think, oh, that's okay, it's not because usually wood tannins will come to the surface and they'll come in like these little areas and you're like, oh my gosh, that's where I missed a spot of shellac and I should have put on two coats. So always, always put on two coats and you guys, this goes so fast. This stuff dries. By the time you get around to the side of your project, this side is already dry. So it's not like you have to wait 24 hours in between coats. So two coats of shellac, okay? So this piece here, when I first get a piece of furniture, bring it into my workshop, I'm going to vacuum it with my shop vac to get all the dust and dead bugs because there's spiders and crap inside <laughs> old pieces of furniture. So you're gonna wanna shop vac your whole piece. And then I use a product called Crud Cutter. Ooh, I should have brought that over here. It's on the other side of my workshop. It's a spray. It looks like this stuff right here. I'll put a little screenshot of it here. Crud Cutter is great for degreasing your piece of furniture and just cleaning it, giving like a thorough clean. It's gonna have your piece of furniture, it's gonna, I call it like gunga and grime, gunga, nastification, that's another word I love to use. Think about it, people's hands, fingers, dirt, grime, sometimes smoke. A lot of these old pieces of furniture, back in the day people smoked like crazy, you know, it was a sign of the times. And um, so you'll find a lot of your pieces will have just a film on it. So what I do is I always, when I first get it shot back, and then I will take crud cutter to the piece of furniture, clean it all up. That's what I did with this one. And then I apply two coats of my shellac on this one. I knew I was painting this piece 100% with paint. So I knew that I didn't need to sand off any of the finish because there really wasn't a, a top coat on this piece of furniture. It was very dry to the touch. I could tell there wasn't a poly on this piece of furniture. Also, let me just interject here. Prepping a piece of furniture is going to vary from each piece that you get your hands on. Some pieces of furniture will have a really thick layer of varnish that I would advise someone, yeah, you should probably sand that off. Other pieces of furniture, if there's not a thick layer of top coat, um, some of them you can just like scuff sand and you'll be okay with it. It all depends. There's some gray area with pieces of furniture and it's, it really varies from piece to piece. So I wish I could say you absolutely do this with every single piece of furniture. Not necessarily true. It depends on the type of wood as well. The more pieces that you do, the more you'll get knowledge of, oh, I have to do this. Oh, that one I have to do like total prep, like everything. I have to get that finish completely off. Other ones you can get away with prepping but not having to go crazy on it. So this one here, two coats of shellac 
and then I painted it this nice uh, mint green color and I had no bleed through with tannins or anything like that. Um, I applied wax as my top coat for the legs and then on this um, area here I did a water-based top coat and I did not have any problems with bleed through coming through the surface and that's because I shellacked. Shellacked acts like a barrier. It stops everything from coming through to the surface. So anything that you stick on top of the shellac is gonna stick really well. Shellac has properties in it where it just, if you put paint on it, it's gonna stick. So I love shellac more than um, primer. So I know a lot of people who use primer, we're gonna go over here to my white piece of furniture. Now primer, um, some people use a white primer that has shellac in it. That's fine. Um, I find for me, this piece here was shiny. It did have kind of like a top coat on it. So after I vacuumed it and after I sprayed crud cutter on it and cleaned it, I did sand this piece a bit. I sanded the edges. The edges down here were kind of bumpy and indented, and I like my edges looking smooth. Um, I also went here on the ornate areas, and I hand sanded, because I couldn't get an orbital sander, obviously, in there, and I wouldn't use an orbital sander on some of these decorative um, areas. So in those areas, I like to use these little tools, these little sanding tools, a larger one here, and then sometimes I use sandpaper wrapped around a felt block, and I usually use 120 to 150 grit sandpaper to rough up the surface and get as much as I can that glossy finish off. Now, do you have to go hog wild and get the finish completely off a piece of furniture? No, you don't, not necessarily. Um, there's some extreme cases where I've had some really orange Cheeto looking pieces of furniture. That's the best way I can describe it, um, where I've taken the finish completely off. But I know not everybody has access to an orbital sander or know how to use one. And so at the very least, I advise people at least scruff sand a piece of furniture up. You need to create like teeth so then that way um, you won't have adhesion issues. So I did with the sanding, um, and then I applied two coats of shellac, and then I applied my paint. Now with white pieces of furniture, here's a little trick for you. If you're buying expensive chalk paint, um, again, I have no problem with their products. I just have a problem with the way they market them. Um, if you buy expensive chalk paint, or you make your own chalk paint, you don't want to use your good stuff as your first coat. So this is where I'd say if you have white primer, Use the white primer as your white um, your first coat. I have cheap Valspar Signature White Paint over there in my workshop, and I will use that as my first coat. Why am I gonna use my expensive or my homemade chalk paint as my first coat? So I'll use cheap white paint as my first coat, and then my second and third coats are my good paint, and that's how I cover uh, pieces of furniture with white paint and then I don't have any issues with bleed through or anything like that because I've put two coats of shellac. I'm hoping I'm making sense. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you. So this one was vacuum it, um, sand it, I'm sorry, vacuum, crud cutter, sand it, two coats of shellac, three coats of paint, but my first coat was cheap white paint. As you can see, a lot of steps but worth it because look how that one turned out. It's beautiful. And then I didn't have any problems when I put my top coat on. I'm confident when I get to that step, I don't have to go, oh no, I hope I don't have yellowing. No, I did everything correctly and it looks good. You guys, I just finished this piece. It's called my new adventure piece. Um, this piece was pretty far gone when I got it. I got this piece free and I love free furniture but it was in really bad shape and it looked like a stale Dorito when I got it. That's the best way I can describe the color. It was very orange. I was like, Ugh, I gotta do something with this. Um, here's the before photo of what this desk looked like. So big difference. Um, with black paint, you can kind of cheat when it comes to prepping. So I call it cheating, but it's just, there's no need for a certain step. So with, if you're going to paint a piece of furniture, dark black, 
or a dark navy. Um, I would say those two colors, you can get away with not applying shellac. There's really no need to because shellac is mainly used for blocking wood stains and wood tannins. And with black paint, you aren't going to see those. And I usually have had no issues with anything coming through to the surface through black paint. Black paint just covers it up. So with this piece, um, I knew I wanted to get as much as that orange finish off. This one did have um, like a thick poly on it. So I did have to, I got my orbital sander out and I also have um, another sander that's in the shape of like a rectangle. And that's how I get, you know, into like my edging. Um, and I sanded as much as I could the orange finish off this piece. So what I did first is you vacuum it, make sure I cleaned it out. Then I took a crud cutter to it, sprayed it, wiped it down, and then I sanded. And I will say I really sanded this piece. I had to. And then after I got done with that, no need for shellac, no need for a primer. I started painting with black. I sealed this piece, the black, with a black wax. And then um, on the top, obviously on an area where I stain the wood, I'm sanding, I put a wood conditioner on, I put a stain on, and then I put multiple coats of a poly. So when I'm rattling off these, all these processes, yeah, refinishing furniture, restoring furniture, painting furniture, there's a lot of steps. Um, and every step is important and prepping is so important. It, it's just vital for the success of your project. I wish it was super easy and I could just grab every piece of furniture and just start painting. Truly, I would. Prepping sucks. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's not fun, right? Like, oh, great. I got to put shellac on. Oh, great. I got to, you know, vacuum out this piece and like hand sand in these areas. So what you have to do is you have to change your mindset. And I had to do that within myself because I'm creative and I want to get to the fun part and see the colors. And I've had to look at it like, no, this is, this is part of the process. And I have to learn to enjoy each step and know that it's so needed if I want to have a beautiful finished product in front of me instead of one where I'm like, oh crap, now it's peeling. Now it's not sticking. The paint is bubbling, you know? So it's so important. Please, please, please prep your pieces. Um, if you have any questions, how I've explained the processes here, I know I'm throwing a lot of information, especially the new people with um, dabbling in the world of uh, refinishing furniture. Please leave any questions that you may have in the comment section. I am happy to help you. I try to do um, a really good job that's really important to me because I tell people I'm here to teach you and I want to help people. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section and I will help you figure it out. And I hope this video has been helpful to people. I really do. And chalk paint companies, come on. You can at least put on your label minimal prepping or it's advised to, you know, prep your pieces before you start painting. Quit tricking people and quit trying to get people to spend money without giving them the full picture of what's involved with refinishing a piece of furniture because there's a lot involved. So there's my PSA. I said it, I meant what I said, and I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Before I forget, you guys can go find me um, on my other social media accounts. I have a Facebook business page and that's here at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. And you can also find me on Instagram and that's here at Bethany.Yusuf. Thank you again for joining me for, hopefully this was an informative video. And Biscuit and I say toodaloo.